giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archived FIRST Robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Welcome back to Infimidation, where we talk the best robots from the best region in first. Five events this week, three new venues, two different time zones, and one instance of that rarest and sweetest prize in FRC, the double gold cling bling. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm PJ. I'm Nick. I'm Nick Jr. And I'm Freddie. Tonight we have a giveaway from this show, thanks to Redfish Robotics, of fun logo mugs. Let's bring on producer Tyler to talk more about what it is and how you can win. Yeah, thanks, Freddie. So uh, once again, if you guys have been watching the show, uh, most of the times here uh, in the last two, we've been giving away these awesome mugs from Redfish Robotics who have uh, made these uh, for us to send out. Uh, you can check them out, uh, by the way, if you go to tinyurl.com uh, forward slash Redfish Robotics. Uh, they have some other mugs you can check out too. But if you're interested in winning, we're keeping the same keyword tonight. Um, it does reset each time, so make sure you retype it in if you're sticking with us throughout all the region recaps. And the keyword's just fun mug. One word, fun mug in chat. And that's your opportunity to win. You have to make sure you click that follow button. Or if you like to have five times luck, go ahead and shoot us a subscription. Help support the show. You can do so for free through Twitch Prime or for just a few bucks a month. Uh, good luck in winning the mug and enjoy Infundation, everybody. All right. Thank you, Tyler. We had a few new events this week, the first of which being the Detroit District. PJ, what do you have for us regarding Detroit? All right, Detroit, uh, this is the first time Cast Tech has hosted a district uh, for a while. First time Detroit, the city proper, has had a district since 2012. Uh, so I was excited to be back. A lot of inner city Detroit teams, a lot of a couple of visiting teams. The number one seed at the end of qualifications was 4680, the Aztec Eagles out of Detroit after a finalist finish at uh, Southfield week one. This week they seeded first, picked 3641, the Flying Toasters out of South Lion. And 22-24, Robo Phoenix out of Detroit uh, to form their alliance. They ended up winning, beating the alliance, the third-seeded alliance in the finals of 2048, the Pink Panthers, 123 Cosmos out of Hamtramck, and 77-89, the Oakland Panthers out of Detroit. Uh, for chairmans, uh, the winner was 226, the Hammerheads out of Troy. EI went to 36-41, the Flying Toasters. Uh, so let's throw up in that gold-silver cling bling for the Toasters with their winner and EI. However, with the Toasters not winning chairmans at this event, this, uh, if anyone remembers my, my bold prediction from our preseason show, I said one of the longest active chairman streaks was going to end this year, and Toasters will not be getting a chairman's award this year, and they were one of those such streaks. Well, so, unless they decide to try to sneak into another event last second, you know, so that, you never that's know. That's fair. Fair. They are going to Buckeye, but they're ineligible, ineligible for chairmans there. Sure. So they would have to either switch their third event to a Michigan event or do a fourth event, which I don't know if they're willing to do that, but they yep. might. We'll see. Um, and then the Rookie All-Star Award went to 77-69 OS Crew out of Royal Oak. Uh, <clears throat> along with that RAS, OS Crew ranked sixth, were the second overall pick, and made it to the semifinals, uh, which is you know not not too shabby for a first event ever. Uh, this is, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, 3098's former lead mentor, Smith, uh, Steve Smicka, this is his new rookie team. So it makes a lot of sense that they were successful. Uh, this is the first ever event win for Aztec and Robo Phoenix. So congratulations to them on their first medals. And so now we're going to throw it over to Freddie, who's going to talk about Muskegon. All right. Muskegon was a great event on the west side of the state. We had the Alliance 3 win the event of Team 4004, Mars Rovers, out of Muskegon, our gracious hosts. Team 3546, Buck and Gears, out of Grand Haven. And Team 3458, Code Blue, out of Holland. They beat out the first alliance of 3572, Wavelength, from Norton Shores. 
Team 6090 Wayland Wildcats out of Wayland, and Team 6097 Botcats out of Brethren. Our chairmans went to Team 3603 Cyber Coyotes from Reed City. Our engineering inspiration went to 3618 Petoskey Paladins. And our rookie all-star went to Team 7602 Spartronics from Scottville. A couple of notes about the playoff rounds for our winning alliance. 3546 actually broke their hatch panel mechanism in the quarterfinals, which forced them to play defense for the rest of the eliminations. Also, 4004 broke their elevator during the semifinals, and they just barely got it fixed in time for the finals. So congratulations are in order for that alliance to fight through the adversity and take home the blue banners. A couple points of note. Oh, we had pretty low ranking scores here. First place had a rank score of 2.25, which is actually the second lowest first seed rank score of the week. Uh, Michigan's still showing no love for the Rocket. Had, we actually had zero Rocket ranking points at this event. And lastly, the Hab docking rank point was also fairly scarce, only appearing in one third of our matches. Now I'm going to send it over to Nick to talk about Centerline. All right. So Centerline this year uh, was a pretty good time. Uh, PJ and myself, were actually, we're both there. PJ was our glorious uh, game announcer for the weekend. Um, so great job, PJ. I thought you did a great job. Um, but yeah, so uh, qualification matches at the end. Uh, Team 33, the Killer Bees, seeded number one uh, with a 2.75 ranking point average. They actually finished seven ranking points ahead of the next team, which happened to be their uh, the team they ended up picking to join their alliance, Team 1025 Impy from Ferndale. And uh, they also invited Team 5555, the Spartans, from Warren to join their alliance. And they would end up facing off against the number two alliance, uh, who was captained by 51, Wings of Fire, from Pontiac. Uh, they would pair up with 2851, Crevolution, from Sterling Heights, and 469, Lost Gorillas, from Bloomfield Hills. Um, in the end, the number one alliance would take it. Um, in three matches, however, it did go to three matches. Uh, so definitely a fight till the end. Um so yeah, overall the the competition was really high. Um, it's really good to see that the Hab line uh, cross in Sandstorm. Uh, there was a 92.3 percent completion on that, so that's good. Almost everyone's getting across the line. Um, we saw about almost a quarter of the total matches having one of the having the Hab ro uh, ranking point. Uh, but just like uh, Freddie said for uh, Muskegon, uh, there were no rockets completed at center line. Lots of defense being played this weekend. Um, so overall, uh, great, great competition, lots of good robots. Uh, as far as chairmans goes, uh, 33, the Killer Bees, did win chairmans as well, so they get that double gold cling bling. And uh, Engineering Inspiration went to 910, Foley Freeze from Madison Heights. And the Rookie All-Star Award went to 7762, the Autopilots from Warren. All right, we're going to throw it over to Nick Jr. to talk about Gull Lake. Well, real fast. Actually, nope. for those... Who didn't realize? Um, Satellite started off with uh, some people were following and wondering why Satellite was so far behind the entire weekend. Oh uh, yeah, I totally forgot. Yeah. I know. On Thursday, uh, we actually had to evacuate the pits for about two hours. Yeah, like three hours. Maybe closer to three <laughs> because there was like a bunch of people started like coughing and having this burning feeling in their throat, so they had to call the fire department and do a whole sweep. Um, so oh they God. lost three hours of pit time. So actually, we yeah. the event organizers decided to delay the beginning of matches a little bit to try to make up a little bit of that lost time. So that's why Satellite was running about an hour, hour and a half to two hours behind that entire the entire weekend. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I know. I know. We were sad to uh, to miss our practice time, but uh, but there were some teams who had to move to a classroom to have their pits in all weekend. There was like wow. six of them. So wow. yeah, man, yeah, that it, room was cramped. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was crazy. But, you know, it still ended up being a great event, and we kind of got back on schedule, so it was good. <laughs> yep. All right, go ahead, Nick, with uh, Gull Lake. Yeah, so uh, Gull Lake ended up uh, being an interesting one. Uh, one thing we did find out Thursday night that uh, two teams were unable to make it, so we actually only ended up with 38 teams at the Gull Lake District. Um, after Qualls, uh, ranks 5th through 1, 41, 30, and 5th, 55, 01, and 4th, uh, 48, 55, and 3rd. 51, 52 in second, and uh, ending with the number one alliance being 35, 38. Uh, again, the number one alliance uh, was uh, the winners of the Gold Lake District, led by 35, 38, the Robo Jackets, and 
Um, team 5152 Alato Bots was their first pick, and then Team 6120 Cyber Stings out of New Haven. Uh, the first two banners uh, for 6120 and 5152. Um, finalists came out for Alliance number two, uh, led by 4855 Ram Geddon out of South Haven. Uh, first pick, Team 3357 Comets out of Grand Rapids, and Team 68 Truck Town Thunder out of Ortonville. Uh, Chairman's was an interesting one, which was taken by Team 1940, the Tech Tigers out of Benton Harbor. Uh, this was their first Chairman's ever. I'm not sure that anybody saw that one coming. And then EI was taken by Team 3357, the Comets out of Grand Rapids. Um, something interesting here, the Rookie All-Star was also taken, before I continue, the Rookie All-Star was also taken um, by, I believe, 7226, or I'm sorry, 7658. Uh, that team being the Magitech. Um, an interesting point for this weekend was there was only one rocket completed that was not with fouls. Uh, that was with Team 3538 and uh, the Robo Jackets and Team 5843 Flurb. Um, another thing is that as much as possible, or as much as people were expecting uh, 35 and 38, or 3538 and 3357 to pair together, 3357 ranked lower than planned and did not have a HAB 3 all weekend. Uh, but some uh, some witnessed it being performed on the practice field. Um, another interesting point could be 3538's climber did not seem to be working late Friday um, and all day Saturday. So the HAB 3 from 5152, a lot of bots could have been the deal breaker between them and 3357. Uh, let's go ahead and send it over to PJ to hear about our Kingsford district. All right, yeah, so Kingsford, this is another one of our new events. This one actually was far enough west in Michigan. It took place in the central time zone, which I didn't even realize any part of Michigan was in the central time zone. So we learned something new this week. Uh, our winners uh, was the third seeded alliance of 6569, the Gladiators, 245 Adam Bots, and 1596, the Instigators. Uh, this is actually the Instigators' first event win ever, which I was surprised by. You know, they're a 2005 rookie. And before before this year, they only had two finalist appearances ever, and this was their first ever win. So huge congratulations to them. They've been a they're one of the original teams up in the UP out in Sault Ste. Marie. So I just want to throw a huge congratulations to them yeah. on getting finally getting that blue banner. Our finalist was the number one seed alliance of thirty eight seventy five Red Storm Robotics, forty three ninety one the Brave Bots, and seventy twenty I am Robot from Iron Mountain. Uh, chairmans would go to 3602, the Robomos. This is their first chairmans ever. EI would go to 2586, the Copperbots. Rookie All Star was 7782, Wolverine Circuit Breakers from Rock, which is just the name of the city. So I learned that one too. Michigan has a city <laughs> that's just called Rock. Um, <laughs> so, so that was fun. I had to check three times to see if it was real. Um, so. At this event, there was actually a controversial call in finals match three. Uh, there was a controversial free climb given. In the clip, you can kind of see 245 seemingly push 70-20 into the hab zone from across the field. This draws a red foul, and a free climb uh, was granted to the Adam bots as a result as contact occurring in the last 30 seconds within the hab zone is a free climb. However, as I watched it, one could definitely argue for a C08 call in the scenario which is the rule against forcing your opponent to uh forcing your opponent forcing your opponent to get fouls so they uh when i saw that so it, this match was decided by two points so if the refs would have gone with the co8 call against against blue as opposed to giving red as opposed to giving blue the free climb this entire event goes a different way so just something very interesting i saw about sort of different interpretations of the rules. And then um, before we move on, I think Nick has one thing he wants to add. Nick Jr., I should say. Yeah, so really quick, uh, Allison just corrected me in the chat. So I just wanted to say out there that uh, 3538's Climbery uh, was working, and they said they just decided to score uh, more game pieces at Goal Lake. So I just wanted to clear that up to make sure there was no um, communica uh, miscommunication. So um, do you mind, uh, Nick, go ahead and take us in the top ten? Actually, I think Tyler has something he wants to say about yeah, Kingsford. Yeah, Ty Tyler was there. at, uh, he was up there last week, so. Yeah, I just want to pop in and say uh, Kingsford was a really cool event. I uh, came up there to uh, train a couple of awesome people uh, for the MC and GA role, so I think they'll, they're going to be in great shape uh, moving forward in future years. Uh, PJ, I, I just want to, I want to ask you, man, because as somebody who's not a ref, to me, on this call, 
Uh, and I'm just going to rewind this a little bit. So I totally get this part right here where 245 is pushing 70-20, right? Yeah. But they back off, and doesn't 70-20 have plenty of room to turn and not hit 245 in the hab? Like, look at all that time they have right there. The hab zone is that entire area, though. Oh, yeah, you're right. right. I'm so sorry. So the hab zone's the whole blue line. Yeah, and yeah, also, yeah. there's six feet, I believe, is how much you have to back up. And, I don't know, that's dicey on whether they were a full six feet away from them. Sure. That's for a pin. But, uh, oh, that's true. That is for a pin. Yeah. Point. But, I mean, like, so my thing, the hab zone's behind that entire blue line. So here, if, as you can see, like, 245 pushes them into the corner there, which, if they, if they push them more towards the platform i'd sort of give them that because it's an act of gameplay and uh 70 20 just shouldn't have been there but the fact that they push them and where they push them from i would be inclined to have given uh blue the foul in this scenario but so chat I, I, chat we'd love to hear what you think by the way too so type that in the chat we'd love to get your opinions on yeah. uh how you would call this because it's always tough to do in the in the heat of the moment but we'd love to see uh how you would call uh this foul and real, and real quick before I lead into the top 10, like the last thing I would say about this is what's kind of unfortunate sometimes about the way first does rules is like I would look at this and I would say, okay, 245 drove on to have one with one second left. They yeah, were never, exactly. so they were never ever going to get have two or have three. So like I would give them have one, but like I wish there was some kind of thing in the rules where I would be allowed to just give them have one and not award a have three because there's no way that that prevented them from getting a high climb. But Sometimes that's just kind of the way the rules work. Um, but anyway, moving on to the top 10. Uh, this is the top 10 vote gunners in Michigan um, voted on by you, the fun community, from our FRC top 25 poll. Um, so we'll look at those. Uh, we also have our ELO ratings for all the teams listed on there this week as well. So let's just take a quick conversation on uh, what everyone thinks about this. What do you guys think? Um, I'll go first because I have a lot of feelings about it. <laughs> um, there's a few teams. Like, I think the out of towners seem to have, uh, sort of stolen some votes without super impressive performances, like 217 at Finger Lakes. I mean, I know their ELO's okay and it's up there, but like 217 at, at, at Finger Lakes was not super impressive. Um, 27 did okay down in Rocket City. I probably wouldn't have them at number two. And, um, you know, the the number one issue I have with this list is number 216 in the number the number 10 slot with that 1500 ELO, which is below the you know, worldwide average, I believe Nick pointed out earlier. And it's they were a rank seven bounced in quarterfinals at, uh, at an Ontario event. So um, that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the the base. This is more of a this is a PSA. This is a perfect example. Of it. The only reason this is happening, guys, is you guys got to vote. Um, obviously, yeah. the more you vote, the the teams that deserve to be up there are going to be up there, and you know, just get out there and vote. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Tyler, you were saying like uh, definitely, Finn definitely seemed like it was a little underrepresented this week in the overall polling. So if you guys want to see more Michigan teams up in the overall poll. Uh, you guys got to vote. Otherwise, you know, that's not going to happen. And and then also just within itself, you know, maybe the order won't always be what it maybe should be. I, I personally would have liked to see uh, maybe 60, 90 and 245 make maybe the nine and 10 spot. Um, that said, 51, you know, did do a really great job this weekend at center line. So, you know, two out of those three teams total, I think, would kind of take those last two spots uh, in my book. So something I just want to uh, add in here, because uh, the, the first, you know, for Michigan, the first few teams are showing up, like, you know, well in the rankings and that sort of thing in regards to the general top 25. Uh, but, yeah, you go down to, like, uh, the number 10 spot there. I think – I don't know. I don't remember exactly what they were in. I think you said uh, they're 100, 100, 195th. 195th, yeah. I was rhetorically saying that, but that's okay. Oh. So, uh, so we're around that, that area for something like that. Uh, so that, I mean, that really means like we're getting the few teams, Michigan, but if you want to see more teams uh, up there, not only do you have to vote, cause I'm assuming most of you who watch the show do vote. Right. Uh, but if you don't, you should, and you should be telling other people to go out and, and vote for their favorite teams as well, too, uh, for best performers. Uh, you know, we, we get now, I think this past week, we were close to 400 votes or 400 submissions, I should say, wow. uh, from people. And it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That means that if you don't keep up with the other regions, uh, then that's going to happen. Remember, you can only vote once. So if you vote multiple times, we're just going to delete your uh, entry. But uh, make sure uh, that you're telling a lot of people to get out there, uh, take a look at what teams are competing, and uh, vote for the top 25. All right. 
Uh, let's move into previews. We're a little behind, so we're going to kind of speed through these a little bit. We do have five events to preview. I'm going to start off with Lincoln. Uh, there is only two teams at Lincoln that haven't played yet. Um, so overall, everyone's kind of coming in with experience. Uh, I would say 67, hot team, is going to be the heavy favorite. Um, but also look for either 3542 Speed or 3656 the Dreadbots to pair up with uh, 67. That would be my guess for the winning alliance. Other teams to look out for would be 314, 503, 573, 5050, and 5530. Those would be kind of my other teams to keep an eye on. And as far as chairmans goes, uh, the two heavy favorites, 66 and 503, have both already won chairmans now this year. So it's kind of a toss up between a few teams who have won it before. Um, but honestly, this could really go anyway. So it'll be interesting to see who wins chairman's, uh, Nick, what do you have for Jackson? Yeah. So, uh, we see the first of, uh, 302 dragons in Michigan, uh, that compete at Miami Valley and won that regional and got a trip to the Detroit championship from it. Uh, we see 1023 Bedford express and, uh, 1481, the riveters for a second time. Uh, definitely looking to see more out of, uh, 4362, the gems after, uh, um, kind of an off performance, I think would be for them at Milford. Um, and then we see the Dark Horse 5205 uh, Full Metal Jackets here. That's still a banner at Lakeview. Um, other teams to look at being in the mix could be 3604 Goon Squad, uh, 5907 CC Shambots, and 4325 Robo Rangers, who won at St. Joseph. Uh, the Chairman's Award looks to be led by 302 Dragons and 4327 Q Branch. Uh, Freddie, what do you have for us up north? Okay, so for Alpino 1, we have 5505, the host of the event would be our favorite. As a matter of fact, they haven't been knocked out in a quarterfinal round since their rookie year, and they've made finals in seven out of their last 10 regular season events in team history. So they're definitely the favorites there. 35-36 is on their third district event already, despite it only being week four. Uh, they should be pretty good as well. Uh, 55-05 is also going to be the most, the most likely uh, chairman's favorite. 2075, 4392, and 6077 are debuting this weekend. And also, only nine teams have competed before, so we're going to be seeing a lot of new faces up in uh, up in Alpena. All right, fast. Uh, Midland, I'm only going to talk about 26-19, coming off a disappointing quarterfinal exit at Kettering. Uh, they always do great at their home event, though, making finals all of the last four years. They're also the chairman's favorite. 21 of these 40 teams have yet to play a match this year, so it's going to be very interesting. Nick, West Michigan. All right, 13 teams haven't played an event yet. Otherwise, we've got a lot of experience. 2054 won Lakeview as the number one seed. 5567 won Belleville as the number three seed. Average Joe's lost in the semifinals against the winners of St. Joe's. And then 4003 and 5535 both were on the same alliance in the finals and also lost at St. Joe's. So all those teams, I think, are going to be in the hunt. My bold prediction, 4003 takes the win and also gets the cling bling with chairmans. <laughs> all right, we're going to have to stop it there and wrap the show up. <laughs> Uh, before we do, let's draw for the winner that fun logo mug from Redfish Robotics. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I got to get ready. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to draw for our next mug giveaway, of course, from Redfish Robotics. And the winner of that is going to be a fun FTC Nathan. Uh, congratulations. Oh, my Clearly, oh right. my Nathan. We, We've had Come two hosts on. win now so far. So, apparently, if you, uh, if you stay in, you win. So, that's just the way that it works, I guess. But, uh, so, congratulations, uh, Nathan and... Uh, I'm sure I have your uh, stuff somewhere, you know. So That's you've won about eight, I've ever seen 800 one. different giveaways now, so. <laughs> All right. So with that, congratulations, Nathan. Thank you to everyone who's watched, sent us questions and comments, and supported the show. If you want more FIRST Robotics in your life and like what we do, all that we ask is that you let others know about this show and that this is the place to go for more FRC in their lives. If you got a few bucks to share, we appreciate it. But if not, we totally understand and are delighted to have you on board. Be sure to click that little green follow button above and click the purple sub button to see if we maybe have a free Twitch Prime sub available. On behalf of myself, OG Nick, Nick Jr., Freddie, and our producer Tyler, I would like to thank you for tuning in and thank you to all of our moderators in chat. Our next show is Mouth of the South. We'll be here same time, same place next Monday for our week four recap and week five previews. So have a good night, everybody. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.